Hello, I'm John Cryer. I'm on a show that you may have watched. You probably have. Everybody in the world has. Did you know that Mike's Daily Podcast is completely independently created and produced? Did you know just about every podcast you listen to is part of a huge network, a corporation, or just lifted off a radio station? Did you know big name podcast players like iTunes and Stitcher show only podcasts on their front page for this to podcasts that pay for advertising or have big names that have been on TV or film? I don't know if what I just said was grammatically correct, but I don't care. Please do what you can to support independent podcasters. And now, on with Mike's Daily Podcast. It's independently produced. I was in pretty and pink. This show is clean, pretty much. Mike's Daily Podcast. Mm. Episode 811. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located... Located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. I'm, I am swear I'm just drinking water, but it's got this bizarre effect on me. Mm. Today, I have awesome recipes from Betty, and we interview this unique lady. Mike's Daily Podcast. And we also have Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison, Bentley. And what stresses us out the most, we find out. I love the 1980s. Mike's Daily Podcast. But that was not a decade where anybody I knew got Pragers. You know the old saying, choosers can't be beggars. Wait, is that how it goes? I recently got a hair from a giraffe's tail from my roommate. It's awesome. And on this show, the laughs fail. But I struggle on. Yesterday I met a stuck-up Oakland bitch. Mike's Daily Podcast. I found out something else since we're talking about food that when you put butter in oatmeal, it's rich. Mike's to eat daily and probably way too many calories. Podcast. Although oatmeal is supposed to be good for you. Yeah. I don't know. I hate it. Hate oatmeal. So <laughs> terrible. Hey, last show, Miley Cyrus dropped by and gave us a rousing round of raspiness. Look who just walked in right now. Here. Hello, Michael Myers. It's Matt. I'm Rutabaga. And my name is very happy. Oh, yeah. Rutabagas are good, too. Yeah. Just get those at the, at the farmer's market. Go down there and you maybe you'll hear the disgruntled fiddle player not playing his fiddle because he's afraid of him now. Michael Myers, that's okay. He was born on a luggage rack. And the brewmaster was born in a fiddle. And... Uh, uh, Benita the rodeo queen was born in a stable. All this, this is all these interesting things you need to know in order to understand the show. Look who else just walked in. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the packing attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, you've got too many characters on this show, dear. Well, it is the last place on Earth. And it's probably the last place on Earth that you'd ever see any of these characters. And I see the rain is starting to abate. Which is making Basil the Boxer very irate because he wants me to walk him while the rain has stopped. Basil, you must wait till after the podcast, please. Michael Marsh, you tell us about the Oakland woman that was not very pleasant last night. Ooh. Yeah, I went to see Cure for Gravity, who has been on the show. You can hear them under the interviews from 2014 section on mikesdailypodcast.com. And there was another band there called Mullerette. I would like to interview them at some point. Possibly that will happen this year. And then there was this attractive woman sitting all alone in front of me. I got there kind of early. Maybe a little too early because I had to wait quite a while till there was any music. But this lady sitting in front of me, she's all alone, very attractive. I'm thinking usually in this situation, this person is with someone in the band, a good looking guy in the band, perhaps. Or maybe she knows someone that works at this place. I was at the Awaken Cafe. And uh, she's all, she's like kind of playing with her cell phone, like everybody does now. It's all just staring at that glowing square screen, typing away, and then occasionally putting down. But I notice she's drinking the same thing I'm drinking. So finally I go over and I say, Hey, how did you like uh, that uh, beer? 
And she's like, yeah, it's pretty good. So that was it. The, like not a natural conversation, nothing. It was just like one word answers. All right, maybe that answer I just gave that she gave was not uh, one word, but very short. She was short with me. Short. I don't know what. Maybe did I not bathe yesterday? I did. did last I checked, I wasn't Satan. I don't know, but it just didn't happen. But you know what? That's fine. Let her be independent. Let's hear it for independence. Let's hear it for not being bothered by people when you don't want to be bothered by people. Hey, look, I've been there. So I don't know. That was the whole story with that, Madam Rita Vega. Ah, I don't like to ever be alone. No. I constantly have to have the people around me. Oh, well... See, some people are like that. I I could identify with this woman because she likes live music. She went by herself, and I went. I usually go by myself to see live music. And uh, so, I don't... Maybe that's a trend, though. Maybe more and more people are going to see live music by themselves. And uh, it looks like uh, if that's the case, and the way this person behaved last night, maybe these people want to be alone and don't try to talk to them because they want to be alone. Mike, the next step is these people are going to bring with them bouncers. So, like, they'll be like Taylor Swift when she's trying to eat at a Jack in a Bags. And she's got bouncers around her, so you can't come up to her and go, Taylor, I love you. I love you. Because I love her so much, Mike. Her little tiny little slits for eyes and her big lips and her funny nose. And she sings songs that pertain to my life day. Miley Cyrus doesn't? The round of raspiness that we had on the last show she didn't pertain to you Ugh. oh wow why not hey, she doesn't write her own songs taylor swift is a wizard and a genius day mike it's true and besides i sound like miley cyrus anyway so he gets enough of that do you know that ah i don't see miley cyrus screaming do you know that but maybe that's a good thing because possibly that stresses you out. But you know what they found out, according to the LA Times? Stress is plentiful in the U.S. And stress over money, which is anything but plentiful for many American families, is an overflowing supply, says a new survey. More than one in four Americans report they feel stressed over money. Most of or all of the time. And most say their stress over money has either remained about the same as last year or has gotten worse. In 2007, uh, that's an interesting way of saying that year, the nation had no such stress inequality gap. While average stress levels were higher than they were in 2014, the haves and have-nots professed to experience roughly equal levels of overall stress. By 2014... Stress levels began to diverge along income lines. So it goes in this order of stress. Money, work, family, responsibilities, and health. Those are the top, the, the top stress sources cited by Americans in a survey that was done by the American Psychological Association. So you should try to deal with stress. In healthy ways Exercise Yoga Meditate Speak with your loved ones and friends About your concerns Eat oatmeal with lots of butter Take a deep breath Count to three Exhale slowly This is not turning into a relaxation tape I apologize What do you think? What's your best method for getting rid of stress? Or what stresses you out the most? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com And what do you think about people that are just so uh, Is that your thing? That you want to just go places alone? Is that your deal and you don't want to talk to anyone? Be left alone? Maybe I was talking to like a celebrity or something And she wanted to be left alone I don't know, I didn't recognize her But I live in a cave here at the last place on earth Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also, email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, 
which has gone through some slight renovations since I had that horrendously harsh criticism last weekend over my website. So I changed a couple things up, but it's still basically the same. It's a blog. You can read my blog. You can see the daily podcast pictures. You can access past interviews that I've done and hear past shows. And then you can also find out where to listen to the show on iTunes. Please subscribe to the show there and you can comment on the show. If you do that in iTunes, whatever you have to say about the show, it helps us our ranking. And as John Cryer was mentioning earlier in the show, we need all the help you can, we can get, we can, well, all the help, the 2007 that we can get because uh, apparently iTunes doesn't show any podcasts unless they pay money. It's uh, on the front pages. Otherwise, we we languish in obscurity. We're also on YouTube, and actually we're on a a new YouTube channel as well as the old one. But you can still access the YouTube channel through the link that I have there at MikeStillyPodcast.com. We're also, you can hear us on SoundCloud, TuneIn, which is a great app for your phone to listen to radio and podcasts. We're also on Stitcher. Podomatic, Mixcloud, and Speaker. You can listen to us there. And share the show with your friends on Facebook. Like the Facebook page when I post a new show. Share it with your friends and more people find out about us that way. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. All there at mikesdailypodcast.com as well as Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through the link at mikesdailypodcast.com and we get some support from that. The podcast awards are coming up too. If you would like to vote for this show, there's a link to where to go to do that at mikesdailypodcast.com. Into an interview. On a rainy Sunday, what better place to be than in Betty's kitchen? Betty, are you in your kitchen? Yeah, I was trying to start cooking, yes. What are you going to make? Well, actually, uh, we're going to make some special ribs with a peach sauce and things and then and things like that. Uh, just uh, goodies, you know, but we're not going to have a big party or anything just for us. Betty, how do you make the peach sauce? The peach sauce? Oh, well, Worcestershire sauce and um, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's a little bit involved. Uh, not, not not really. Okay, you, you do. First, you, you get, I got the baby back ribs. Um uh, for you know, uh, for uh, uh, about four people, you know. Oh yeah, uh huh. The, the 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 nice and fresh ones and everything, and you know natural. And then the peach sauce. You put Worcestershire sauce, lemon, and paprika, and and um, onion, oh. and uh, uh, garlic and shallots, and then and then um, mix it all up. Um, you um, uh, brown sugar, of course, and then cook it a little bit slowly on the stove, and then you 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 put that over the ribs uh, uh, after they cook for a little while in the barbie, you know, covered. Oh, okay. Slow, slow on cooking, the... and then uh, you serve. Uh, you, you keep you put some of it uh, on some of it on the on the ribs, and then the, the rest of it you keep for later to serve with the ribs. And uh, peach it's peach preserves that you use. It's mm. really not, it's really it can be easy, but um, uh, it's it's really very pleasant. And I'm looking for my recipe now on my my recipe stand, but somebody must have it out because I don't see it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> they were just looking at it. So anyway, but it's 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 pretty easy. So you put uh, you also put a little dry mustard into it. Which is a uh. sauce, dry mustard, peach pre- preserve, pre- pre- onion. Uh, Onions and and uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar. Yes, of course. Ooh. And then uh, you 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 will cook, uh, just simmer it, you know, on top of the stove. Right. And and then uh, you put some uh, you after you you, you thin your ribs and you put you know you let them stand overnight. Put a little bit of rub on them, not much, but just salt, pepper, and let them stand overnight. Then you before you put them on the on the slow cooker outside, um, then you you uh, put a little bit of sauce, but not too much, and then you serve the rest of the sauce when you when you uh, when you right uh, serve them. And the ribs are staying on the grill for how long? Well, I, um, 
maybe at, at 300 or 250, 300, maybe two hours. Oh, uh-huh, okay. You know, yeah. slow covered, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, slow covered so that they're, mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. got the lid on the grill down? That's right. That's right. Mm. Wow. So, but it's, it's uh, I, I don't know what you have for a barbecue. It's, uh, you know, you have to be careful because you have to be able to just leave it on. If you have a Weber, that's good. If you, um, or a green egg or, or, um. Do you have a green egg? Mm-hmm. You have a green egg? Mm-hmm. Oh, those are amazing. Yeah. They, you can do all kinds of stuff with those. Yeah, you can cook. We've cooked turkeys and ducks and all kinds of stuff with it. Oh, my gosh, Betty. You should have your own show on the Food Network. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm really bad with uh, telling you how to measure certain things because, you know, when you do things a lot, you don't really, you just know, a little bit of that. I have written a couple of recipes, but um, but then I, and I'm more careful, of course. But but when I, uh, you caught me, you know, unaware here. So <laughs> Yeah, but you were able to think of it off the top of your head. That's great. Are, are you from Germany originally? No, I'm from France. Oh, France. Oh, bonsoir. Merci. Oui, <laughs> bon après-midi. Uh, <laughs> It's it's uh, actually bon, still, bo- still bonjour, you know. It's um, bon, bon après midi, yeah. No, bonsoir is for tonight, you know. Oh, okay. Oops. So what I, what would I say now? Uh, bon après midi. Bon après midi. Bon après midi. Bon yeah. après midi. That's right. It means which is good after lunch or good afternoon. You oh. know, good afternoon. Bon après midi. Bon après-midi. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, my first French lesson. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Your recipe sounds great. I'm going to try that. Oh, okay. Well, if you like to cook ribs, I mean, I, I buy the ribs at Trader Joe's because uh, they really have good pork there. It's very healthy. Oh, okay. So I just got a, 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 a rack of baby baby ribs, you know, baby back ribs. And, and, say, and so, you know, a rack is about... Four pounds at the most. It's three point something. So it's enough for four people, really, you uh-huh. know, and because you get about four ribs, four ribs each. You know, that's the most you can get. So it's not, if you're going to have company, I'd say you're going to need two racks, you know? Right. And I don't know what kind of barbecue you have, but... Um, um, I actually have a, it's it's a Weber ripoff. It's not a Weber, but it's it's like shaped kind of like a Weber. Okay, the well, big round room. Gr- but you may have to do it. You may have to cut that rack in two. Cut it uh, in two, in, uh, you know, two halves, and, and, and then do it that way. And indirect heat, right? So put indirect, the coals off indirect, to the side. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, that's exactly. what I'll I'll do that. I like I like to work with the coal versus the gas because you don't get the good flavor, which but is yeah, the gas. We have, yeah, we have a little gas barbecue. You know, we take camping and stuff, and and we use that when we camp. But but uh, for different things, you know, um, the other one is better. My husband has been. My husband is not a cook, but he really has been enjoying the green egg, and he's experimenting with different things on it too. So it's kind of nice because he's never been able to cook anywhere else. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, my but, uh, my so, ex-wife's so. brother got one, and yeah. he, uh, he got it like uh, about a year ago, maybe more than a year yeah, ago. We've and had he had it about three years. Yeah, and he invited yeah. me over, and he was cooking like uh, pork and and and. Mm-hmm. And steak and all kinds of hamburgers, mm-hmm. and it was just so good. And I guess he can smoke stuff in it. Yes, we can put some little um, little chips of of different different uh, smoke flavor, you know, different woods and things. So you can. I don't like a lot of heavy um, smoke thing, you know. But so uh, you can be overly doing it too you know so yeah. you don't want to put too much in there uh, because then you you just you, I don't know that the, 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 the smell is too strong to me or the taste is too strong and, and it overcomes the regular natural taste of the 
of the meat and things. Right. So you have to be to, to achieve a nice balance too. It's uh, it's a matter of learning to do that. It, but they are a little touchy because if you put too much in there, then it's going to be probably done. You know, like if you go to Strizzy's and have their their, their chicken, sometimes they did sometimes I don't we don't go there too much, but. They, I noticed they had the smoke flavor was too strong on the chicken, for example. It uh, distract, it dist- uh, to me, it, it's distracting from the the regular, you know, the the wet, the, the, the flavor of the meats and and and, and vegetables. Uh, so you have to balance this just right too. You don't want to overdo it, you know. Have you been to Sauced out there in Livermore? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. They got some yeah. good. Stuff. I'm it smells so it. good. My daughter is very, very likes it. But, you know, again, you know, you have some people like different things, you know, so you have to just hit it just right. But try the peach preserve, and you can find, uh, you don't find peach preserve too often, um, uh, but I, I, it, I, I know I went to Pleasanton, I go to Jeans in Pleasanton because they have. Um, nice peach preserves there and oh. they also have I, I buy my rabbits there I buy rabbits and things there and pheasants how much is rabbit oh it's about uh, I, don't, I, 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 uh, I think I get a nice rabbit for 20, 20 but it's all frozen so I keep it in my freezer so let's see I, I, mean, I think I paid 20, 23, 24 but did you know it doesn't give you it gives you a, a meat for about um, uh, that for us, we have three, three, three adults. I, I have enough meat for three meals. Oh. Um, uh, but uh, two, two meals plus lunch. You know what I'm saying? And so, and then, but there's no fat. No. No uh, fat. Uh, no fat whatsoever. Oh. So I put it in the oven sometimes with uh, wild mushrooms and white wine and things like that. And and so, or mm. I, I can cook it in the stove. Or sometimes you can put a little cinnamon and and the kind of wild on the stuff and put uh, carrots and and things like this and their little sugary thing and they come out really nice that way too so you can do all kinds of things but there's no fat yeah so you can make really nice uh, it's better to cook it in a little um, dish where you can have the juices and I uh, should put uh, apples and 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 uh, wild mushrooms sometimes, or apples and carrots and things. You can do different things with it. So and then you have a whole meal all together, and then it cooks in an hour. You know, at three twenty-five. Très yeah, bon. Ah bon. <laughs> anyway, so. Okay, I'll, I'll have to try that. I've never cooked rabbit before. Oh, rabbit is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I mean they—it's a—it's a wonderful food supply. I mean they multiply so quickly. Oh uh, uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> now these rabbits um, I buy now are jeans. Uh, you know where jeans is, jeans is in Pleasanton? Jeans it's on, on Valley. Yeah. Jeans Pleasant uh, Jeans Foods Fine Foods. It's and, on Valley. On uh, Valley Road. Valley and uh, uh, Hop Yard. And Hop Yard, okay. And I, I, they have them uh, frozen only. They don't buy. They don't. They don't, they don't it's got. I used to be able to get fresh rabbits from some ranches here, but I can't do that anymore. So I just buy it frozen. But it turns out, you know, I defrost it in the microwave. It comes out fine. Yeah, I, I, I should try. The, I like that. That it doesn't have much fat to it. No fat, because you know. Uh, whereas chicken, you know, you just you always have the fat underneath the skin. You don't with a the rabbit; they they peel it, you know, and so they they peel the skin off, and then everything, and, and you only have a little a little fat around the kidneys. That's all. So that's really close to the six eighty jeans. It's over off Hop Yard and Valley. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. And that's where it is because they only have another store now. Uh, they only have one uh, another store. I think it's in the Peninsula. That's it, Palo Alto or something. Wow. They only have two stores around the Bay. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a kind of exclusive thing, but they have great fish too, uh, fresh fish, and um, they have uh, different things, fine fine cheeses and things. It's a bit like a, a Leonardi or. A, you know, it's just kind of a special food. But that, that's where I get those things now. That's not... Pleasanton gets some nice stuff. Yes. Yes. 
Oh my gosh, it looks like I know someone that did a review on on Yelp. They yes. like put their picture on Yelp. Right. Right, I'm like, right. oh, I know this person. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so weird when you see someone you know pop up on Yelp. Yeah. And, and you're like, right, wow. Right, right. Yeah, I, he's good for that. Yeah. I know lots of people that like food. It's interesting. Okay. Well, okay. I'm, I'll try the, the rabbit thing and the rib thing. <laughs> well, okay. But I'm sorry I'm, I'm not able to give you all the, the, the thing right now. It's, it's just... Uh, I'm I'm trying to get ready to go to do, have the taxes done this afternoon. It's uh. not a fun thing. But anyway, um, but um, anyway, uh, peach. Uh, yeah, but you, yeah, again, um, yeah, Worcestershire sauce, peach, uh, dry mustard, a little bit of dry mustard, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, you know, and then uh, that and um, let's see, and, uh, and, and, uh, olive oil. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, of course, that's always a basic, you know? Yeah, olive oil, and it's a good oil for you. Yes, it's excellent for you, yeah. It's good fats good in fat. it. Right. The, m- and so, anyway. Uh, uh, well, merci. Oh, je vous en prie. <laughs> okay, okay uh, Mike, thanks, you too. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Bon Après-midi, yeah. Bon après-midi. Exactly. Après uh, means after, uh, midi means noon. So bon, you know, is bon. good. It's good, okay. Après, uh, après is after, midi, midi is noon. So bon, bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Voilà. Voilà. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bon après-midi. <laughs> Merci, vous aussi. <laughs> it means you too. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, we learned some French and a cool recipe as she hangs up. As we go outside of the last place on earth, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. Not too far away from Livermore is Danville, and there's this place called Sycamore Valley Park and the regional park where you can walk amongst these hills, and it's a beautiful view of Mount Diablo. And also you can see over to Danville. It's green and it's beautiful. And I took this picture, I think last week, where I have Danville to my right. See that lovely picture of me? And yeah, okay, maybe I need to burn that shirt. That's not the best shirt I have, really, or those shorts. But And in my pocket is a bunch of doggy bags because I had Basil with me. So my pocket looks like it's stuffed with leprechaun's gold. But it wasn't, sadly. MikeSaleyPodcast.com to see that picture. Mike and Marcia, I wanted to tell you that John Cryer is my favorite actor of all times. Ooh. Madam, that sounded painful. It was. Next show, more shenanigans. We'll hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike, you got too many characters on this show, day. Yeah, Mike, you should just stick to ass. Because I can sing Wrecking Ball. You came in like a Wrecking Ball. Do you know that? Lovely. I hope she's at the Grammys tonight. You've got me in a Miley Cyrus mood. Thanks. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.